So in this screencast, we are going to take a look at multiple linear least squares. Now in previous examples, we looked at just a function y of one variable x. In many cases, however, you might have an output y that depends on many variables x. So a vector of x's where you have x1, x2, dot, 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 all the way up to xm. So what can we do in this case? So the first thing you need to know is that um, when we were talking about linear least squares, it's not because we were fitting the equation of a line, right? So it's not because we have y equals mx plus b. That's the equation of a line. Um, and then what we have after that equation is that because we have multiple measurements, we end up with a system of equations where you have y1 equals x1 times m plus b y2 equals x2 times m plus b, dot, 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 yn equals xn times m plus b. So these are all equations for a line given different values of the data. But it's linear least squares, not because they're equations for a line, but because the equation, the overall equation, once you um, do the sum of the squares of the errors, is linear in the unknown parameters when you take the partial derivatives with respect to the parameters, right? And that arises because each one of these equations is linear with respect to m and b. So you can use um, you know, the matrix form of the equation if you wish. Right? Now the previous formula that was derived in section 13.1 was called simple because there's only one explanatory variable and therefore there are only two parameters m and b slope intercept. But if y depends on x1, x2, dot 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 up to xm, we will have m plus one unknown parameters. Instead of two, we have now m plus one. We have a zero, a one, dot, 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 up to a m. And so the way that looks is that you have y, in this case, would be equal to a zero plus a one x. Now if we stopped there, it would be just what, what we had before. But you have multiple x's, so x one plus a two x two, dot, 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 up to a m x m, right? So pretend like we have this situation where we have this many different explanatory variables. And therefore, um, m plus 1 different parameters, right? So slopes for each one of them plus one intercept. Um, and we have n measurements for y and for different values of these x's. Then our system equation of equations becomes y1 is equal to a1 x11. So the first measurement in x1 plus, uh oh, plus a2, x12, plus dot dot dot, a m, x1 m, oh, and I forgot a0, so plus a0. Now note, this x11 is the first measurement of x1. This would be the first measurement of x2. This is the first measurement of xm, right? And then so you have that being your first data point. Your second data point would be y2 is equal to a1 times x21. So your second measurement of x1 plus a2 x22 plus dot 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 and so on and so forth. So in this case we have n equations and m unknowns, m plus 1, sorry. So you have a0 and then a1, a2 dot 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 all the way up to am. Right? And so for each one of these equations, we have m x's, but we have n equations, so the number of x measurements we have is n times m. Okay, so great. So the question is, is n greater than, less than, or equal to m? Well, of course it's greater than, because if it weren't, if it were equal, then we have a square system. We have exactly the number of unknowns as equations. If it's less than, then we have an underdetermined system, so we have to have more information. But we have too much information in these cases. That's why we're trying to optimize and fit the data. And so we have negative degrees of freedom, degrees of freedom less than zero, and we have an overdetermined system. And it's called non-square because the matrix is non-square. So if we put this into matrix format, what we would see is something that looks a little bit more like this. So we have our vector of y's, which is what is on the left-hand side of the equation. So we have y1, y2, dot, 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 all the way up to yn, that vector of knowns, oops, is equal to 
some matrix now where we have x11, x12, dot, 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 up to x1m. In the second row, x21, x22, dot, 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 up to x2m. Oops, I'm forgetting the a0 term again, so there's a, also a 1 here in the end for a0. That pattern repeats until the final row is xn1, xn2, dot, 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 xnm, and then a 1. And so if you look at this right now, what you have is that this matrix is M plus 1 columns and N rows. And so I didn't draw this very well in, in this example, but these number of columns or number of rows exceeds the number of columns. So we have a tall rectangle for a matrix. That's why it's called a non-square system. And correspondingly, we don't have as many A's as we have Y's. So this vector is going to be shorter than this column vector, right? So this column vector will be a1, a2, dot, 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 am, a0. Now usually a0 is drawn at first, uh, on top at first, but I screwed up and I put it at the end this time. It doesn't matter. In the end, you can still do the exact same calculation with this. And so what you get is you get um, what this looks like in matrix format is the vector y is equal to the matrix m right here, which we have, oops, not matrix m, sorry the matrix of x values, and with a column of ones at the end, times a, where a is your vector of unknowns here. right? And so if you look at the size of these things here, we have an n by one vector here. We have a, an n by m plus one matrix there. And this is an m plus one by one vector. Oops, vector, this is a matrix, this is a vector, right? And so it's a non-square system. So we can't just take the matrix inverse of this and multiply it by that and then get what the values of these A's are here. So if we want to do that, then we have to take some a, a different course of action, right? So the way to do that is the first thing we're going to do is we are going to start out by multiplying from the left by x transpose. So multiply, multiply from the left by x transpose. So what we're going to do is we're going to put x transpose on the left of each side of the equation. So x transpose times y equals x transpose times capital X, sorry, x transpose times x times this vector a. And so what we get now is that these combinations of things, this here will give us an m plus 1 by one vector. This guy here gives us an m plus one by m matrix, square matrix. And this guy here still is your m plus one by one column vector. And so now you have a square system. And so we can take an inverse of the system. So what we're going to do next, step two, is multiply again from the left by x transpose x inverse. And when you do that, what you get is the following. You get x transpose x inverse times x transpose times y is equal to, now I could write x transpose x inverse times x transpose x times a, but since the inverses just cancel it out, what you get on the other side is just a. And so by doing this, what you get is you essentially this becomes something like the inverse of x originally, because originally we had y is equal to x times a. And so now we, what we've got is a by itself over here, and this big old matrix here times y. And so what this big old matrix here is called is called the pseudo inverse of x. Right? And so it's a way of calculating that what is not really the inverse of x, but it kind of looks like it from a mathematical standpoint, at least from this equation, this together multiplied onto y from the left removes x from this side, and now you just get a here. Now, it's a little bit cheating because it's not a square system. And so what you're doing, believe it or not, is that this manipulation here gives us actually a least squares estimate of the parameters in a. And so if we were going to do this on a system that we've already studied, this y equals mx plus, plus b, 
we will actually get exactly the least squares estimate of um, the two parameters in A. In that case, it would be M and B. And so in the next example, we are going to take a look at that. So in this example, what we want to do is we want to use the pseudo inverse to perform a least squares minimization of the data from our previous example, example 3.1, to find the slope and the intercept. So if you remember from class, what this example was is that you had um, values of our conductivity and values of our concentration of A, of that salt, right? So you have K, kappa 1 is equal to MCA1 plus B, kappa 2 is equal to MCA2 plus B, uh, dot, 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 right? So in matrix format, we can express this as Y, this capital Y is equal to kappa 1, kappa 2, dot, 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 on down, equals to, and in this case, our matrix is now CA1, 1, CA2, 1, dot, 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 dot. And that follows all the way down to, the, to our final data point. And then our A vector is just M and B. So you can see, that's A, this is what I was calling this matrix X, which is now 2 by N, where we have N data points, and this is our vector Y. And so what we can see here is that um, it makes sense in matrix format, because when you take this vector A and multiply it onto this matrix, then you have M times CA1 plus B times 1 equals kappa 1. M times CA2 plus B times 1 equals kappa 2, all the way on down, right? And so um, we can perform this pseudo inverse in MATLAB by typing these following commands. However, in MATLAB, MATLAB just knows what to do. And so you don't actually have to do all of this rigmarole to get this thing called this um, pseudo inverse of x. What you can do is if you just use the backslash operator, MATLAB just already knows what to do. And even if it's an overdetermined system, it no determined system, it knows exactly how to handle that. So if you remember from class, our data in Excel looked like this. So this is our concentration of A. This is our um, values of kappa that were measured. And what we did in class is we filled this whole thing out and figured out what M and B were. So if we flip over to MATLAB, then what we can do is we can load in our data. Now I preloaded it into this mat file, so I can just load it directly from here when I run the script. I can build our matrix X. Oops, this is the wrong, wrong one. Okay, here it is. Here it is. So load in our um, data, build our matrix X, where we have CA in the, um, in the left column of X, and in the right column of X, we just have a whole bunch of ones. And this is a command that just tells you you give a bunch of ones in a column vector, right? You can calculate the pseudo inverse this way and get that answer, or you can just simply use the backslash. And so if I run this script, then what I get in MATLAB is I get this answer. So using the slope and intercept, sorry, using um, by calculating by hand the pseudo um, inverse, you get this, and using the backslash, you get the exact same answer. And note that these are the same answers for the slope intercept that we found in our um, in-class example um, with the Excel file from the previous lecture. Now, one more thing I wanna show you here, this is just something that you might wanna do in general, is that how did I get these data here from Excel into MATLAB? What you can do is you can copy this column in Excel. And in MATLAB, if I wanted to store this in the variable CA, I just say CA equals and put a little open square bracket there, paste it in, put a close square bracket and hit enter. And there I have my variable. I did the same thing for kappa. Kappa equals this guy here. Copy that, move back over to MATLAB, paste and square bracket and there's my CA and kappa. And so that's how you could do that in that case.